This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Oh, this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine You know my Jesus gave it to me And I'm gonna let it shine Oh, Jesus gave it to me And I'm gonna let it shine Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Lent. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May the peace of the Lord be with each of you. And with your spirit. And let us put ourselves before God's mercy and compassion. Lord Jesus, you call us from darkness into light. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us from blindness into healing. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us from isolation into your community. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciled the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and, and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. When the sons of Jesse came, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as the human sees. The human looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. Jesse sent and brought David in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David. From that day forward, brothers and sisters, the word of the Lord. Shepherd, there is no 
nothing I shall want The Lord is my shepherd There is nothing I shall want Fresh and green are the pastures Where he gives me repose Near restful waters He leads me to revive my drooping spirit The Lord is my shepherd There is nothing I shall want He guides me along the right path He is true to his name If I should walk in the valley of darkness No evil would I fear For you your crook and your staff with these you give me comfort the Lord is my shepherd there is nothing I shall want surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all all the days all the days of my Shall I dwell forever and ever? The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything expressed in the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Praise to you, Lord, Jesus Christ, King of endless glory, King of endless glory. Praise to The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. Jesus spat on the ground and made mud with saliva. 
spread the mud on the man's eyes, and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then the man who was blind went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit on the side of the road and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, it's just someone who looks like him. The man kept saying, I am the man. Now they brought to the Pharisees the man who had been formerly blind. Now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made mud and opened his eyes. The Pharisees began to ask him how he received his sight. He said to him, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed it off, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how could a man who is a sinner perform such signs? They were very divided. Then they said again to the former blind man, What do you have to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He is a prophet. They answered, You were born entirely in sins, and you're trying to teach us. And they drove the man out of the temple. Jesus heard that he'd been driven out of the temple. And when he found him, Jesus said to him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? Tell me so I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking to you is he. And the man said, Lord, I believed in the worship of Jesus. My sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I have a title for today's homily. The Pandemic Journey of Faith. This week marks one year since we started the pandemic on March 11th of last year. So this has been a pandemic journey of faith. In the middle of all this, it was easy just to go and give up. But it's also, I think, for people of faith, if we can open our eyes and see that God is around. You know, that first reading from Samuel says that God sees different than we see. We just see the exterior folk, and God sees our heart. So we can open our eyes and be more, think back over this last year of how God has been present in so many, many ways. You know, just the people who stepped up to take care of all the folks who were sick and dying from COVID, the hospital people, the doctors and nurses, the EMTs, and later on, the ones who kept being able to supply us with food, the grocery workers and the frontline workers who took care of the basics of life from the trash to all the other stuff we need, even if we're staying home in lockdown to survive. But in the middle of all this, here at St. Martin's in a very personal way, I was just so impressed of how that we literally did not miss a Sunday of worship. We changed from being in church to being online, but the fact we could do it so quickly is really a miracle. Many other parishes did not do that. They were often out of connect, contact with their people and without doing mass for weeks and a few for a couple of months. So I feel very blessed that we have enough technical people who are able to figure out how we can make this work to do the mass, this YouTube mass, and later on to do our, you know, virtual and live, live uh, stream masses on Sunday. And in addition to that, how so many of you stepped up to continue to send in your ties and use a new online platforms for giving and how you continue to drop off your, your donations at church. I mean, we were able to continue without missing the beat to keep paying our bills and even more so to continue our outreach ministry to so many people who are just really struggling. We went from giving out 10 bags of groceries a week to over 30 some bags of groceries a week. And we were blessed in so many ways. So when I look back over this last year, it really, it strengthens my faith personally and my faith in God and my faith in our community here at St. Martin's that we were able to quickly change what we did in a way that we can still meet your needs and the needs of so many people who are just struggling. You know, it just, God is good. It's, it was amazing to me how the, we just didn't just say, well, we can't do anything now. So in the gospel story today, we see that man who was blind from birth. Just imagine, you've never been able to see anything, including even your own family. And Jesus comes, puts mud on his eyes, he washes them off, and now he can see. The guy must have been like, oh, my Lord, look what's here. Look, that's what my parents look like. That's what my family looks like. That's where I live looks like. And he went, though, from being in isolation to be in a community because he was a beggar on the side of the road begging for enough food to be able to live. And now he can be part of a community. So he really went on his journey from isolation to community. 
I believe that's kind of what's happened to us since last year. When we started off a year ago, we were literally put into isolation where we couldn't see our family, our friends. We didn't see our coworkers at work. We couldn't go to church, to restaurants, to sporting events, to movies, any place. It's like kind of we're on lockdown. That's really isolation for many people. This was a really struggling time and still is in the area of mental health. And people just who especially live alone just feel totally isolated. But I believe in this whole process, God was with us. And God was there to give the strength needed for those hardworking nurses and doctors and all the medical people. God was present with all those scientists who could figure out how to make a vaccine and make it good and make it healthy in record time. I believe God was with us here at St. Martin's, as I just said, how we continue to stay in business. So I believe that God is always there calling us from darkness into light. Sometimes we are just so wrapped up in our own confusion and pain that we don't see that, but God is always present with us. So here we see this man in the gospel story who was literally in his own isolated, dark world, and Jesus heals his eyes, he can see, and now he can walk in the light. He can see his family and his village and his people. I believe that God continues to do that for all of us. So where are we in our own journey of faith? You notice in, the, in the John's gospel today, he first starts off and they said, who healed you? He says, that man over there, I think he's named Jesus. Then he goes on to say, well, he must be a prophet. And then at the end of the story, when he meets Jesus face to face, he says, yes, Lord, I believe. So where are you in your own faith journey this Lent? For many of us, it's been a real challenging year, but this Lent's an opportunity to kind of look back, at, look back and see how God's hand has been present in so many of the actions that we've all experienced. So I just invite each of us as we continue for the next few weeks of Lent, we get to Easter, to kind of be more aware of how God's hand is still present as we now hopefully get more of the vaccines, how we continue the discipline of wearing masks and social distancing as hard as that is, just so that we can collectively be working with God to be instruments of his healing. It takes all of us to make this work. And so I just invite us as we continue our journey to ask ourselves, where am I in my pandemic journey of faith? God is the one who's always been present. Sometimes I think we kind of opt out and run away from God, but God is present with us. May we be like that man in the story today, the formerly blind man who went from being in isolation to being part of a community. May we no longer get stuck in our own darkness, our own fear, our own anger, our own issues, but trust that God is there with us right now to invite us to walk in the light. May we be people who like that poor guy who was blind and now could see the world around him. May we be people who give God thanks and praise that we don't have to be stuck in darkness, but we can walk in the light of Jesus. Amen. I invite you to pray with me. Our creed, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken with the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us present to the Lord our needs and needs of our larger community. For all those who've died, especially for Lauren Charles, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who continue to die from COVID-19, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And thanksgiving for Deacon Bobby's recovery from COVID, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. 
and for all those adults and children preparing for the Easter sacraments of baptism and confirmation and Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. I invite you to lift up your needs and concerns. Lord God, we lift up to you these, all the struggles that we carry within us in our hearts. We make them known through your son, Jesus, who lives with and through us now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we prepare the altar, I thank all of you for your continued support between online and the front door and the post office. They stop by here a couple times a week. I'm lucky to get mail more than three times a week. Who knows? But hey, it still comes. Lord God, we ask that you bless this bread and this wine, fruit of the field and the fruit of the vine, so it soon becomes the very body of blood of Jesus. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. We place before you, Lord, with joy these offerings for our salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through your Son, Jesus. By the mystery of the Incarnation, Jesus has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in, in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, we join all the angels as we acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willing into his passion, he took bread and gave me thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave you thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving you thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that by taking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our Bishop, and all of the women and men who lead and guide the church. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who've died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And we pray especially for all those who've died from COVID-19. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Martin, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him, with him, in him. O God, almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the fullness of God's kingdom as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each of you. And with your spirit. And if you are blessed to be with other people, I invite you now to share a sign of God's peace and God's presence. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but when I say the word, my soul shall be healed. I invite each of you to spiritually invite the Lord to come into your hearts to help so that we are not stuck in the darkness of fear and struggle, but we can be open to the light and the love and the grace of the Lord. This is the body of Christ. Let us bow our heads and pray. 
O God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to pray with me the prayer for justice and human dignity crafted by Cardinal Wilton Gregory and the bishops of our diocese. Loving and faithful God, we come to you, Father, to ask that through your Son, Jesus, and in communion with the Holy Spirit, you help us in the battle against America's original sin of racism that divides us from being the body of Christ that we are called to be as your children. We implore you to give us your wisdom so that we may build a community founded on the gospel message of the life and dignity of all people from the womb to the tomb and to live a communion like the divine communion of the Holy Trinity. Bless parents that they may form their children in faith to love one another regardless of skin color, ethnicity, and national origin, just as Jesus loves us. Bless and protect all of us as we live out our faith and be an instrument of your peace, as St. Francis said. Fill us with a thirst for justice and righteousness. Hear our prayer and give us the courage, compassion, and perseverance to root out any form of injustice from within our communities and to bring the healing love of Christ to all in need. Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of our Church, hasten to help us and intercede on our behalf so that our archdiocese can continue to witness the gospel message, the life and dignity of all people. Amen. Our announcements. The good news is that Deacon Bobby is out of the hospital, recovering home from COVID. He hopes to be back with us in a couple of weeks. This is the weekend to sign up for share. It's a regular sign up, this regular value pack. It's a mixed beef special for $35, a ham for $22, and a breakfast box for $15. So if you contact me before Sunday afternoon or Earl Washington, we will get that together for you. I continue to strongly urge everyone to get their vaccine, no matter if it's Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson & Johnson. As Pope Francis said, all three are perfectly acceptable. And he kept saying, you know, encourage your people to do this for the sake of all of us around the world. Uh, let's see, Women's History Family Fun Night is next Saturday, March the 20th at 645. Contact Angel for information on that. To look ahead, Palm Sunday is two weeks from now. So on Palm Sunday, March the 28th, we have our regular, we'll do our regular YouTube Mass as you're on now. And we will do on Sunday, the regular 12 noon in person and live stream. Then after that Mass, from one o'clock to two o'clock on Sunday, March 28th, we will do again, our palms and alms. We can drive up in front of North Capitol Street. We'll have people to hand you palms. If you want to give us your alms and donations, you can do that. We are make it easy for you. So palms and alms after the mass from one to two o'clock on Palm Sunday. So we look forward to the rest of Holy Week on Holy Thursday. We will go in, which is April the 1st at 7.30 night. We'll have a live, live person, in-person live stream mass. And that we will worship feed as part of that mass at church, but we encourage those who are able to, to join us at home to wash each other's feet. And I'll talk more about that next week. Uh, on Good Friday, we'll have a, our YouTube uh, reflection on the Stations of the Cross. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll have one Mass again at 12 noon in person and live streamed. And we'll also have a YouTube Mass that you are now watching. So you can kind of plan ahead. See, so the Parish Council meets this coming Tuesday, March 16th at 7 o'clock. Thank God for Zoom, we'd be in big, big trouble. Let's see, birthdays I know about. Vera, Col Col Vera Colvin turned 70 a couple days ago on March the 10th. And Michael Height turned 14 sometime this week. And to all the rest who have birthdays this week, have a very blessed birthday. I think that's all I need to tell you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Lord continue to help us not get stuck in the darkness of struggles but to follow Jesus and to walk in the light. Let the church say, Amen. Amen. May the Lord give blessing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Through these 40 days, Lord, 
salida 